Hi there, this is Jen Grice from jengrice.com. I am a Christian divorce mentor and empowerment coach. And today I'm gonna talk about divorcing toxic family. So first let's talk about signs that you have a toxic family. So one of the things that I noticed early on in my family was how uh, people would talk about other family members behind their back or have a problem with other family members instead of telling that person, they tell everybody else that they have a problem um, in that kind of behavior. And so when they're talking about these other people, um, not only are they talking bad about them, but to their face, they are acting like there's not a problem. Um, when, you know, if you're in that situation, you know there is a problem. Uh, another thing they do is they throw people under the bus. They'll say, I have your back on this situation. You know, maybe there's a conflict with somebody else. Uh, outside of the family and then you're asking your family to kind of you know come alongside you and be loyal to you um, and help you through a, a tough time like a divorce or some other situation and instead of uh, siding with you and being loyal to you they'll they'll uh, say to you that they're loyal to you but then I'll tell the other person oh well, I'm loyal to you too um, and or uh, they ride the fence and say, you know, oh, you know, my own relative, this is what they, this is the bad things they said about you, yada, yada. You know, that kind of dysfunctional behavior, it's just not, not healthy. They're often riding the fence um, and not um, being real or authentic with anyone. And lastly, one of the big ways to tell that you are dealing with dysfunctional family is that they attack you when you set up boundaries. If you say, I don't want to participate in these family functions anymore. I wanna uh, separate myself from this function. Or if they say, they start gossiping with you or telling you something, then you say, you know, I'd really rather you, you know, take that up with this other person instead of telling me. Um, or one thing I have liked to say in the past is like, what are you saying about me behind my back when I'm not around if you're talking about this person? Uh, behind their back and they're not around. Um, that's that's one of the things that, you know, I know the toxic people do. And so they don't want to hear, you know, the truth. They don't want to hear that somebody's standing up to them. And so when you call out the dysfunction or you set up the boundaries, they'll start to get angry at you and blame you. And all of a sudden you're the scapegoat in the family um, or the black sheep or whatever other label, dysfunctional label that they give you. So often this looks very normal if this is what you grew up with. I know myself, this is the you know kind of situations that I grew up around and then married into and I just you know thought it was normal behavior until I started reading the boundary books and really learning about psychological abuse and just um, getting deep into that um, topic for my own learning that I realized just what a dysfunctional family uh, that I grew up in. And so I uh, had to divorce them as well. I had to divorce their ways. I didn't want to be a fence rider. I didn't want to keep people in my life just for the fact that they are related to me, um, even though they're dysfunctional. I know uh, my grandmother used to say, you know, don't burn your bridges. Um, you might need them someday. And I thought, you know, for a long time, I believed that lie that, um, that you should just be nice to people just because even if they're nasty or mean to you or dysfunctional because you might need them but really if you think about a dysfunctional way, dysfunctional way of viewing things as you're just viewing people as what you can get from them using them for what you need and you no know, relationships shouldn't be like that relationships should be give and take you're both giving and you're both receiving and you're feeling fulfilled by the relationship and if you feel like you're just being used, then that's probably a dysfunctional or toxic relationship. So just to kind of reiterate, you know, what I'm talking about, I grew up, um, like I said, in a family like this, and we would go to family gatherings, and I had an aunt and uncle that often um, uh, hosted these events, and there was always an issue at the events. Somebody was mad at somebody, um, and somebody was telling me that they're mad at somebody or, you know, it's saying, oh, we're all mad at grandma or whatever it was. There was always something going on behind the scenes, you know, some kind of toxic dysfunctional behavior that, that not everybody knew about. 
and for some reason I always got roped into all of it and I just thought you know after a while after growing up and having my own family I thought I don't want to be involved in that anymore um so I just stopped going to family functions and luckily I had an excuse I lived far enough away and I kind of disengaged from my entire family um but when they did come around again I had to just say you know it's just not good for me. Um, the final straw for me was when my mother passed away and her husband, who was, I believe, is a narcissist, he um, acted really mean to me. I never did anything to the man. Uh, acted really mean to me and nasty um, as far as with my mother's stuff was nasty and hurt, saying hurtful things after my mo mother, she was dead, she couldn't defend herself. Um, and then took everything um, including, you know, letters that were written to me and uh, just said I couldn't have anything. And he, he controlled the whole situation, decided what I could have and what I couldn't have, and even went so far as threw out flowers that um, were sent to my mom's funeral address to me. He threw those out. I got rid of them. Um, you know, just rotten things like that. And uh, my aunt and uncle, these, the same aunt and uncle, and Cousins were all like, oh, we got your back. Even my own brother was like, you need to stand up to him and tell me you, you know, those were your flowers and that you're owed, you know, at least, you know, this, these letters and all these other things. Um, but then when push come to shove, they were all just pushing me out to take the fall, to take the blame, you know, uh, as the minute he came around and said, oh, what's going on? They were, oh my gosh, we don't know what Jen's doing. You know, we, we can't control her. It was then I knew I needed to divorce my t dysfunctional family um, to find peace in my life from all of that. Um, the same, same family, um, you know, when my, when I was living with my husband and married and had children, um, one of my cousin's children ran away and my cousin called me up and said, you know, oh, Jen, we need your help. Can you please call my daughter and, and help her out and encourage her to come home? You know, it's, it's just hard. I had, I had been a child who ran away um, from my own mother. And so I did encourage her that her mom loved her and that she should go back home. But, you know, a couple years later, when the same thing adult. happened, my teenage daughter ran away. She's now an adult. Um, they flip flop. The opposite of how I treated her is how I was treated. So, you know, I just realized, you know, I just don't want to have those type of people in my life that don't support me and don't encourage me as much as I would support and encourage them. You know, that's what family is supposed to do. You don't hurt each other. You don't purposely, maliciously try to do things, um, <clears throat> to get back at or, um, you know, that family is supposed to be loving and caring. You're supposed to be the most loving and caring to the people that you, to your family. And if you're going to throw your family under the bus and, um, you know, tell your, your family's children that, oh yeah, good job for leaving them, you know, them because they're so awful, you know. So we can only assume that dysfunctional people and toxic people continue to be toxic and d dysfunctional and separating them is the best thing that you can do um, so that you can think clearly and you can act clearly um, because you know the bible clearly says you know that the bad character will corrupt good character and if your family is toxic that you may need to, to divorce them as well as you're getting emotionally healthy after divorce so if you have any questions, please leave that in the comments or at the end, subscribe to my email newsletter and you can respond to any emails that you get that way as well. So I hope this was helpful to you. I hope you have a great day and see you in the next video.